Good morning, everybody. Today we're cutting probably the biggest hill on the farm. See this little kitty cat down there? As soon as you cut the grass, they all come and then start looking for mice, which is great because the mice damage the grass. But anyways, this is the field that we cut um, when we first cut hay this year. Um, now this is the second cutting. Eric cut it last night. Um, but we are cutting eco hay up here. This whole bank or the side of the hill here and then all the way over here as well. Sickle bar mowers like this seem to have a reputation for not cutting very well and just being difficult to use overall. I'm not sure if that's totally deserved, but they do require quite a bit of experience to use. When I first started working with Cobblebodley, I had never used one before. And uh, for that first summer, there were some really bad cuts. So what I'm doing as I'm mowing is I'm just watching the bar to make sure it's cutting properly. Right now it's cutting really well. You wanna see the grass kind of fall like it's surprised. If it starts to get pushed over or bunch up, then you're not gonna get a good cut. This is what a bad cut looks like. If you see certain areas, the mower just didn't cut the grass or cut it very long. We've been going for quite a while. We've got quite a bit done, but uh, I'm gonna stop and uh, grease the machine real quick. Every machine has a little toolbox here and a little grease gun. So in the front of the bar, so there's a little joint right in there that runs out of grease. So you just gotta make sure it stays topped off. Ugh. Let's see if I can do this right handed. Yeah, you can see it squeeze out there a little bit. So we're good. And then we just check the blade. See the little teeth here. All these, this is removable. This whole line of teeth is removable. So Eric's take these, takes these off and then sharpens them. And then with time they get dull or if you hit rocks or sticks, you can uh, damage the teeth. So you just wanna check your teeth and make sure they're all nice and sharp. Hmm, it's got some stuff in there. Maybe it's not tight enough. So the grass goes in here and then these teeth are all mounted on a bar that slides back and forth. So there's friction in all of these places. So we would just want to put our hand on it and make sure that um, it's not hot to the touch. So they all feel good. And if anything, this one maybe is a little bit too loose. Yeah, so we're gonna tighten it up real quick. So I'm gonna put like just a maybe quarter turn and then drive it for a little bit and see how it cuts. When you're mowing and the grass is constantly getting jammed up and not cutting properly, it can be really frustrating. But the most frustrating part is not knowing how to fix it. There's so many different variables. Is your blade not tight enough? Is it too tight? Are you going too fast? Are you going too slow? Maybe it's the grass. Is the grass too thick or too matted? Or maybe my blade's not sharp enough? It takes quite a bit of experience to use machinery like this and use it well. If you grew up doing this and other farm work, a lot of these things just seem like common sense because you've built up that knowledge and that skill maybe without even realizing it. From the outside looking in, it looks easy. It's a mower, you just cut the grass. It's pretty simple. But then when you start to mow and your mower is jamming every two seconds, it becomes not so easy. All right, this is all done here. All of this is done. Eric's just got a little bit more up there. I'm gonna go help him real quick. And then we're finished, which is good. I think it's about lunchtime. Look at this view of Einsiedel. Pretty cool. All right, I'm just getting back from lunch here. Eric cut some hay the other day um, that we are gonna now pick up. So we need to switch uh, the Monta out for the twister head. And I'm gonna go over there and start getting that hay ready. I didn't ask Eric when he cut this, but uh, it's actually looking really dry. So 
a little bit green under there, but not bad at all. So anyways, um, it's all of this here, all the way down there, and then over here, way up there. You can see the meetings here, the grocer meeting on the left and the uh, Kleiner meeting on the, the right. We're overlooking the town of Truxlau right here. You can see the church right here and then uh, the new school. Actually, you can't see the new school. It's painted green, so it blends in with the grass. It's camouflage. So if you see something that looks like a school, it's not. There's nothing there at all. Up here, the Abbey can drive with no problem. So I'm gonna go around and bring the hay in from the uh, edge of the forest just a little bit so the Abbey can get to it. Um, I'm either gonna use a rake or the leaf blower. I'm not sure. I think I'm gonna try the leaf blower because it's a little bit faster, but if there's too much grass, I'm gonna switch to a hand rake. As an American, coming to Switzerland and working on these hills is pretty cool. The views are amazing, but it's also super scary. Everywhere I had lived in the US, it wasn't flat. There were mountains. But as soon as a tractor goes over like 10 degrees, I'm out. It's the scariest thing ever. I'm like, get me out of this tractor. I would much rather be on my two feet. Maybe I'm just a chicken but I don't think so. When you combine steep terrain and heavy machinery, there are so many things that can go wrong. And I lack the experience to even know all of the things that could go wrong. Maybe this doesn't look that steep on video, but I'm telling you, it is super scary being in a machine going down this or up this. It's not for me at all. For Eric, he doesn't seem to care at all. Uh, I do. Eric was telling me about different factors that go into deciding where he will drive and where he won't. You have to really know the field, where the ground is and isn't stable enough to support the weight of a tractor and where all of the wet spots are. When you're on a hill like this, a lot of the weight of the tractor is on the downhill tires. And if those tires sink into the mud, then your hill just got a lot steeper. Of course, we all know that wet mud is slippery, and if the ground is too wet, it might be dangerous to drive on. But it can also be dangerous when the ground is too dry. When the ground is so dry that the tires can't dig in and get a really good grip, then you can just slide down like it was mud. Hay is also really slippery and dangerous. This is a shot from an upcoming video, but I wanted to show it here because it's a great example. Eric is following a road across this slope, and then suddenly he stops and backs up. I didn't think much about this, but then later he said, yeah, if I drive across there, I'm gonna slide off the road. Watch this video again. You see the front end of the tractor start to slide before he stops and backs up. If he had just ignored the small slide and kept on driving, he could have slid off the road and ended up in a really bad spot. This is how fast things can go wrong. And it's not just where you should and shouldn't drive, it's also how you drive and how much knowledge you have of the machine's capabilities. And this is probably what freaks me out the most. There's nothing in a tractor warning you. There's no like blinking light or like a warning, pull up, pull up, or anything like that saying you're about to flip over. You just have to kind of know the limits of the machinery you're in. And unfortunately, accidents happen. From 2010 to 2019, 155 people died working with agricultural heavy machinery. There are accidents from tractors flipping over and being on something too steep, but there's also other things like mechanical failures or even traffic accidents. Now, in recent years, these numbers have been steadily going down as education increases, as well as just better technology. The tractors and machines we're driving today are much better and safer than they were even 10, 20 years ago. But we've only talked about the people killed working with heavy machinery. There's another 189 people that died in that same period from all of the other dangers of farming. That silage in those silos we talked about can produce gases that can kill you. So can that slurry we talked about. And there are lots and lots of other things. Farming is one of the most dangerous jobs in Switzerland, and you have to have a lot of knowledge as a farmer to avoid these dangers while at the same time getting the job done. Coming from outside of the farming world, this kind of surprised me a little bit. To be a modern farmer, you have to know a lot 
about a lot of different things. You have to know a lot about animals. You have to know a lot about the land. You have to know a lot about machinery. You have to know a lot about all of these different dangers and so many other things. This was kind of the inspiration behind these videos. I was like, there's a lot more to this than it appears from the outside. And I like making videos, so I should make videos about this because it's really interesting. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good one.